before I uh, start the proper video. Um, I've just had to re-record this a little bit afterwards. Um, the sheep dip that um, I'm about to sample, spoiler, <laughs> um, this one, you'll notice this is helpful as proof that I've sampled it already and done the video. Um, but I completely neglected to mention that that sheep dip, uh, amongst others, um, was part of a pack of about 20 whiskies, incredibly donated by um, a customer who uh, was, used to be a regular at the whiskey shop while I was manager there. Um, uh, well, I take a customer, two customers, um, husband and wife, Chris and Lindsay Cook. Um, here's a picture of Chris now. Uh, not now, but here's a picture of Chris with the, his donation that I picked up from him a couple of days ago. Um, they are avid whiskey drinkers and they also are a fantastic couple. Um, they've donated a, a number of whiskies and apparently have got some more that they could if I'm really struggling. Um, but I cannot thank them enough for that. Um, so that's why I wanted to do one of theirs um, fairly early on to give them that recognition. Um, and uh, yeah, if there's anybody else out there that's got any, um, any miniatures, I'm going to put the address of the, uh, the blog that I've got, which will have a list of the whiskies that I'm still trying to find. Um, I will put it there, and I'm doing that as a reminder while I'm looking on the editing to do it. So there, go to that web address, um, see if there's any whiskies that you've got, if there's anything you can stick in a little miniature, or in Chris and Lindsay's case, in what I think are soap bottles or something like that, and they use jam labels to write on what was on it. If you've got any way of getting a miniature in there, 25 mils is all I need to add to the list um, to, uh, to get me through this challenge, um, then it would be much appreciated. And if it means that we can raise even more money for charity as well, then so much better. So Chris, Lindsay, thank you so much. Love you guys. That's absolutely brilliant. Um, and now I'll cut to the actual sampling. January 26th, uh, whiskey number three. Uh, we're on track, which is, is good. Um, so, uh, today's whiskey is called Sheep Dip, um, which sounds really attractive. Uh, I'm sure they agree. Um, <clears throat> there are three types of uh, Scotch whiskey, essentially. You've got single malts, which are um, malt whiskey um, from one single distillery. Um, you have blended whiskey, which is a combination of uh, single malt whiskies from uh, various distilleries uh, and also grain whiskey as well. Now, grain whiskey uses a slightly different distilling process, which means you get a lot more of it as a spirit. Um, but grain's quite harsh as a flavour in it. Um, on its own, it's quite a, quite a hard, not particularly pleasant whiskey to drink. Um, but you can get a lot of it um, relatively cheaply. So what blended whiskies are is a combination of malt whiskies to give flavour uh, and grain whiskies to um, essentially fill it out as, as bulk. Um, so the more malt whiskey you have in a blended whiskey tends to be as a rough rule of thumb, um, the, the, the better it is, but only as a very rough rule of thumb. And then in the middle is, is the third type of Scotch whisky, which is um, somewhat confusingly titled now blended malt. Um, it used to be known as vatted malts. Um, but the Scotch Whiskey Association a number of years ago decided that um, that was too confusing for people. Um, uh, the, the everyday man wasn't quite sure what a vatted malt was in relation to a single or a blended whiskey. So we'll make it a lot easier and we'll call it a blended malt. Um, if you see blended malt on the label, it means that it is single malts, single malt whiskies that are blended together, but no grain whiskey is added. So, for example, you could have, and th this is highly unlikely that it even exists, but you could have Glenmorangie single malt, Glenfiddich single malt, Laphroaig single malt, any other single malts that you've got, blended together to create kind of like a super malt, you could almost call it, where supposedly all the best bits of those single malts will blend together in terms of flavour um, and create something that's, you know, even better. Not necessarily the case, but that's kind of the theory behind it is that rather than using grain as filler you just use single malts but you use more than one single malt to get the best bits out of all the individual parts um, so blended malts tend to be more expensive than blends um, simply because they haven't they've got the higher cost of production because they've not got the grain to kind of bulk it out so it's kind of confusing um, it doesn't help on the labels you know the terminology is not brilliant uh, and there are some um, single malt uh, sorry, some blended malts out there that kind of 
pretend that they're single malts by the way that they write things on the label. And as mentioned at Whiskey Number no. One, uh, Cardew did that very thing where they changed to a, a, a vat at the time it was a vatted malt, but it was uh, they changed to a blended malt, but didn't change the label. Just went from single malt to blended malt, and not many people noticed it because it was written quite small. So anyway, sheep dip. Um, which was um, created in 1974 by a, a farmer called M.J. Dowdswell um, in Oldbury on Severn in Gloucestershire. Um, God knows how he did it because he was a farmer and he must have managed to source some whiskies from somewhere uh, and basically blended them together and was selling them at his local pub. Now, there is a legend going that the reason it's called sheep dip um, is because um, to not have to pay tax on um, certain uh, commodities that you need to run your business um, you could put it through as sheep dip on the, on your accounts whether that's true or not I don't know but kind of sounds pretty cool um, it, I've actually got a miniature um, of what it used to look like um, which is that so it's a pretty 70s label now my dad had a bottle of this um, a 70 CL bottle and the labels you know, I looked at it and never I never tried it but I looked at it and I thought I thought it must taste like it sounded, like the label looked, like it tasted like actual sheep dip. Um, sheep dip, if you're not sure, is actually the um, um, the combination of chemicals that they literally dunk sheep in to um, get rid of all the parasites and the mites and everything out of, out of the wool. Um, so it's like really chemically and like loads of stuff and really bad for the environment and poisons the water and everything like that. Um, and as a sort of a kid looking at that label with the picture of the sheep on it, with it being kind of really old school 70s, I just thought it, it tasted like that. As it is, apparently there's uh, 16 different single malts are used in it, all between aged 8 to, uh, to 12 year old. Um, although I did read somewhere that it was actually 8 to 21, so I'm not sure whether which one's correct, but 16 different malts is, is definitely what everybody's saying. Um, and it uses quite a lot of space side now. This new version um, was repackaged. It was uh, Sheep Dip that the original was owned by um, White Mackay, quite a large company, uh, quite a large whiskey company, White Mackay blend you've probably heard of. And uh, one of the um, high ranking management was a guy called Alex Nickel who left the business um, and took the sh uh, Sheep Dip, and there's also Pig's Nose, which is a blend, not blended malt, a blended whiskey. Um, and he took the rights to those two products with him. Um, and basically repackaged it and relaunched it as, um, as sort of a new versions. Now there's a guy that works at White Mackay called Richard Patterson, or Richard Paterson, um, and he is known in the trade as The Nose. Um, very enigmatic, very charismatic, loads of personality, um, and he, what he doesn't know about whiskey doesn't exist, you, you don't need to know it. Um, and he's highly regarded for you know his expertise and his knowledge and the fact that he knows how to pull different whiskies together to create something that tastes absolutely fantastic and apparently he did a lot of work on, on this new version of sheep dip so um, you know it's there's there's a really good background to it and there's um, you know there, there's a lot of things about it that, that should mean that this should be one cracker of a jam I have my glass I have this time the jigger for my 25 mil so I shall pour out on camera unopened there you go Opening it. Oops, that was right next to the microphone, so that's probably going to uh, be really loud. So we're pouring in now. And what I'm going to do with the rest of these miniatures, I've no idea because I don't really want to drink them. Right, so there we go. So it's quite pale. I'm, I'm not sure if you're going to. It's paler than I thought it was going to be. Um, if, I, know it's a, I know it's a clear glass bottle, but um, it's, it's even paler in the glass and it's. Um, I was expecting it to be kind of a little darker and richer, but looks pretty good. Instantly Speyside. There's loads, There's quite a few Speyside whiskies in here, and it's it's got that um, sort of toffee-ishness that's, that's classic to Speyside. But nice, you know, not too heavy, not too full-on. It's um, 40%. Oh, um, you're probably looking at about £30 a bottle for this as well. Um, like I say, slightly more expensive because of the cost of production in it. It's using more whiskies. There isn't that grain whiskey to kind of bulk up the production and then keep the cost down as well. So you might think 30 quid's a bit steep, particularly if you saw blended on the label. Um, it does say a traditional blend of rare single malt Scotch whiskies. Now, rare is rare, but um, it's you know it's, if it said blended malt and you saw 30 quid on the label, you'd be thinking it's a little bit steep, but you know. 
rare single malt whiskies, well, then it must be worth 30 quid. Mm, it's a really nice softness to start with as well. As soon as it hits your tongue and gets over your lips, it's really quite soft. Um, sort of almost like a Werther's Original type flavour. 40%, there is a little bit of a alcohol, alcohol y crackle to it, um, but it's not too overpowering. Not much of a finish. It's, um, it's not hugely rich, but it does have quite a, a nice sweetness to it. Um, it's, it's more on the delicate side than the heavy side, but it's not, I wouldn't say it's light and there's nothing to it. It's very nicely balanced actually. And if anything, it's more as you swallow and the finish than there is right to start with. It's very, very smooth as soon as you pour it into your mouth and it hits your tongue. And it's only once it gets to the back of your throat and you swallow that all those flavours start coming through. If it was the other way around, it would almost be quite disappointing because those flavours would disappear really quickly. But as it is, yes, it's, it's relatively light and there's not a lot to it instantly to start with. But there's enough at the back there that it's actually a really nice jam. It's really, really good. It's very pleasant indeed. I was surprised. It's definitely not what I thought that was going to taste like. Now, I'm not going to open this and try it because this theoretically will taste different to this, theoretically, because as far as I'm aware, they have changed the recipe of the malts in there. But I'm not going to do this I'm not, unless absolutely necessary if I'm really running out. I'm not going to uh, include this in the list of my 366. However, if I do, if I get desperate and I've got to say 300, 320, I might keep that and maybe compare the two at the time. So that's a sheep dip. Go and search it out if you fancy a nice easy drinking whiskey. And I'll see you in the next one.